if the school doesn't give you a response and they, they wait to give you the response until the deadline, again, end of September, October 1st, typically, then you can't apply to other schools until that time. And so that puts you at a disadvantage with every other school that you may want to apply to. And with weaker stats, that potentially hurts you even more. Ask Dr. Gray Pre-Med Q&A. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Good, how are you? I am great. I would love to find out how I can help you today. What's going on? So I had a question, um, a little background is, um, you know, I'll be applying to about seven schools in my state. Okay. There is one school that I'm really hoping to go to, given the fact that it's about 20 minutes away. I own a home. I have a family. Um, my husband's in the military and he works in that same city. Okay. Um, so I know that this school that I want to go to is really big on primary care and rural medicine, given the area. Mm. I met with um, an admissions counselor, and she had expressed to me that if I, you know, checked the box on my application, filled out that portion of the secondary application that I'm interested in their rural medicine um, focus or track, then my application will be viewed a little bit more favorably. Okay. Um, and so... You know, it's possible that I will go into primary care, rural medicine, yeah. but I just, I just don't know. I don't think I'm ready com to commit to it, but because of my stats not being exactly where, you know, they should be, yeah. I really want that boost in my application. So yeah. do I express interest or not? <laughs> yeah. So it's actually a pretty easy answer because if you check that box, the, the reviewer of your application can go to your application and actually look at your activities, right? Actions speak louder than words, right? It's a saying that everyone hopefully knows. And if they look at your application and they go, wait, you just said that you were interested in rural medicine, primary care. None of your activities show that at all. They just won't believe you. They think you checked the box to go, oh, I was I, I was told if I check this box, I am a more competitive applicant based on lower stats. And so it's very simple. Either you have the activities to support saying that you are interested in rural medicine and primary care, or you don't have those activities. And And I would say if you don't have those activities, I would probably not check that box. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't check the box because you may be interested in rural medicine and maybe you should go explore that like ASAP before you apply uh, this coming May or June whenever you are applying to medical school. The, that's the trap that a lot of students fall in is they, they will apply to these schools or apply to these specific programs at these schools thinking, oh, this is my foot in the door. And if you don't have the activities to back that up, then the admissions committee, the reviewers of your application just won't believe you. They'll just think you're you're trying to to pad your application to to help you in some way. So I think that's that's relatively straightforward. So you said maybe I could be interested. Are you in a in a place in life, in location where you can go find a rural clinic to go volunteer at and see what that's like? So um, I'm actually not applying this year. I am applying next year. So that was the interesting part. Like I can go get these opportunities, especially because um, I do live in a very small rural town. Yeah. Um, and pretty much everything around me is very rural. Okay. So, I, you know, the school is 20 minutes north of that's a bigger city. But aside from that, everything is very rural. So I can go get these opportunities. Yeah. Um, and it, I most likely will have to in order to um, you know, have, have a strong application. Um, but again, I just, I don't know what the future holds. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so the nice thing about those check boxes are they aren't official commitments, right? You're not signing a contract saying, if you accept me, this is what I promise I will do, or I owe you my firstborn child, right? It's There's no contract involved. You're just saying, hey, based on my experiences, based on my interests at this moment in time, right? The application is just a single snapshot of, of where you are in that moment and your history. The, the checking of that box just says, yeah, I could see myself potentially in rural medicine and primary care. Outside of that, if you go through medical school, remember, according to the stats, only 25% of the, 
of students entering medical school enter the field that they thought about before they entered, right? So, so 100 students come in all thinking about the specialty that they want, only 25 of those students are, are actually going and applying for that residency. So you can have all of the best intentions, checking that box, getting those experiences right now, going, yeah, this is kind of cool. Like I can be the, the, the county doctor and, and know everyone and, and take care of everyone and, and just be integral to the community. And then you get into medicine and you're like, ooh, orthopedics is really cool, but small town, rural orthopedics just isn't a thing. It's, you can't sustain a practice. So sorry, I changed my mind, right? That happens. But it's, it's not disingenuous to go, right this minute, I'm interested in rural and, and primary care. But again, you have to have the activities to support that checkbox. And if you're not applying for a little while, then great, you, you have the opportunity to go get those experiences, to go, to go reflect on those experiences. And when they ask about them in an interview, and, and say, hey, why are you interested in rural care? Then you can say, well, my time at whatever clinic showed me X, Y, Z, and I'm really passionate about whatever, right? You, you have that opportunity to get those experiences, to reflect on those experiences, and, and check that box with pride, knowing that you, you are definitely interested in it, but also knowing that you can keep an open mind as you go through medical school. Now, so part of that uh, application, when I do check that box, they do ask a few questions okay. about like your knowledge of the um, struggles, of course, that yep. um, people face in rural areas and yep. trying to get help care. And I know that I can confidently speak to things like that. But it, like once I get into that interview, like you say, yeah. I'm kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> well, is it okay to say? Uh, I am very interested in it, but I'm just not sure. You never know. Is that okay? Because I feel like they know that. But Yeah, I, I think if you're checking the box, then then you're saying I'm interested in it right now. Yeah. Yeah. And and the I don't know, maybe there's something else is, is just kind of out of the the vernacular at that point. It's just not in the language. But it's it's an unwritten rule that of course there you're going to be exposed to a lot more during medical school and something else may pique your interest and you'll take a detour and, and that's okay. Uh, but, it, but again, when you check that box and when you get more of those questions, you won't have answers to those questions right now because you don't have those experiences right. seemingly, right? But if you go and get those experiences, then you will have the opportunity to reflect on those experiences, to think about the, the population who is different than you, the population who is underserved, the population who who is disadvantaged, right? And go, how can I help them? And and why do I want to help them? It's getting those experiences that will allow you to check that box, answer those questions, and confidently go into an interview saying, yeah, I, I'm really passionate about these these patients and and being there for them. And and ultimately, maybe you're you're not a primary care rural a medicine specialist, but whatever specialty you go into, you spend 10% of your time in a rural setting because that's just something you became passionate about. Right. No, yeah, that makes sense. I guess the answer to my question was a lot more simple than I thought. <laughs> it's <laughs> usually the case. The pre-meds <laughs> typically complicate things a lot more than they need to. Well, what else can I answer for you? Uh, um... I mean, I guess like my thought is, you know, I talked, like I said, to the ad com and she had said, um, you know, my application gets a more holistic view, checking that box. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't, my other question was about um, like early decision with that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and she had said in their um Website says if you're a really strong applicant, then do early decision. Mm -hmm. I don't like my undergrad GPA isn't there. Yeah. But I really, I, I don't know. My thought is it, it's really going to show my commitment between, you know, rural medicine and early decision because I really am dying to go here. Yeah. But I don't know. What do you think about that? So for me, early decision for most people probably doesn't make sense because the risks generally outweigh the benefits, right? The risks including only being able to apply to one school, 
right? Un- unlike that checkbox we were just talking about, that really isn't a contract. You're just saying, hey, I'm interested in rural healthcare. Checking that box for early decision is a contract with that one school saying, I'm only applying to you. And they have until the end of September, October 1st, typically, to give you a response. They they may respond to you sooner, like right away saying, oh yeah, your stats aren't competitive enough and just reject you right off the bat, which may be good, right? Because then you can go and apply to the rest of the schools in your state and elsewhere where you want to apply. If the school doesn't give you a response and they, they wait to give you the response until the deadline, again, end of September, October 1st, typically, then you can't apply to other schools until that time. And so that puts you at a disadvantage with every other school that you may want to apply to. And with weaker stats, that potentially hurts you even more. So the, I, I understand the thought process to say, well, they'll, they'll see that I'm even extra motivated and extra dedicated to their school if I apply early decision and I check the rural medicine box. But typically, that's just not the way it works. You, you have to be a strong candidate typically for early decision and you have to have really, really, really strong reasons typically on why you want to go to that school, right? You're, you're in that area, husband's in the area, military, own a house, family there, spouse works at the medical school, spouse is in medical school there, right? Very strong ties to why you want to be there. And then it makes sense to apply early decision. But those stats definitely have to be there included in that. And so if they get an early applicant or early application in or early decision application in, then and the stats aren't there, they just won't give you the time of day. And depending on the school, they may roll you over into their general admissions, which is good. Or they may say, nope, you only get one shot, early decision. And if you don't want, if if we don't accept you to early, early decision, then we won't accept you for our general admissions either. And that hurts you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes up my mind. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. That's all you got? I think so. I mean, um, okay. I have one other question <laughs> not go. related to this. Yep. Um, so, like I said, my undergrad GPA isn't really strong. So, it's 3.39 cumulative. Okay. And um, a maybe like a 3.08 science. Okay. I do have a master. So actually, um, episode 216 of your, um, old pre-med podcast, that yep. was my question. Oh, nice. So, uh, <laughs> um, I, so I have a master's of philosophy and chemistry. I know that GPA doesn't, uh, or isn't included. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm wondering, should I take a few other classes, undergrad, undergrad classes, if I can afford it? What is your, trend, right? So this is the first question I want every student asking. Every student going down this path, if they hear a friend saying, what's uh, or on social media, right? Wherever my GPA, like you said, 3.08 science GPA, that tells me nothing, right? Right. What is the trend? Did you, did you start off with a 0.9 and then you were like 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, however that works out, right? What is the trend in that? Um, so I don't know the exact trend in the science GPA, okay. um, but it's overall very strong upward. Like uh, I got a C, um, I think C's in both uh, general bio and general chem my freshman year. And okay. then I got A's in physical chemistry and biochemistry. Like, And then I got A's in grad school. So Okay. And your, your master's is in what again? Uh, chemistry. Okay. So chemistry, strong masters there. Um, so for me, how many credits was that? Uh, upwards of forty for the masters. Okay. So and you, how? What's your GPA there? Was it a four point It was a three point eight one. Ah, oh, slacker. <laughs> so close. No, that's... I didn't know I wanted to go to med school at the time. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. That that that's a more of an interesting story. Okay. So for me, right? For me. The, the question always is not, it, are your grades good enough to get into medical school? When you have a strong upward trend, including the master's, the question is, have you proven academic ability to get through medical school, pass the boards, et cetera? Right? The MCAT is still one big question mark. Uh, I'm assuming you haven't taken the MCAT yet if you're not planning on applying this year. The, the 
from a GPA perspective, having an upward trend, having the 3.8 master's degree in chemistry with 40 something credits, right? You've proven yourself academically. I don't think you need to do anymore. Okay. Now you need to hope a medical school also thinks like me, but a lot of them <laughs> do, which is why I give that advice because I talk to the medical schools and then spit it out back here. So I, I, I think you've proven yourself academically, right? The, the application is so much more. Uh, the, the activities, the shadowing, the clinical experience, all of that is super important as well. The MCAT, obviously very important. Timing of the application, getting in it early, uh, doing your secondaries, right? telling your story, that is such an important part of this. right? We, I, in, in the Hangout, the pre-med Hangout in my Facebook group, a, a student posted a question the other day saying, I had a 520 MCAT score, I had a few interviews, but one rejection and been radio silent since from the other schools. And I had him send me his application and the, the story just isn't there, right? It's not just about stats. And I think you've proven yourself well enough with how you've done in your masters and the trends that from a GPA perspective, it's not an issue. Yes, it looks scary, right? The 3.08 when you look at the MSTAR and you're like, wait a minute, like my, my GPA is nowhere near any of these other, uh, these other stats. Remember, you're not just that single number. And medical schools can see all of the data points that you are putting in. And they can manipulate all of those data points however they want to manipulate them to say, hey, if we have a student less than a 3.2 undergraduate GPA but has a master's in chemistry, biology, biochemistry, whatever, with greater than a 3.7 GPA, then great. Pass our filter. We want to take a look at them. Right? Medical schools can do whatever they want and you've proven yourself GPA wise. So, so for me, that's not an issue. Happy to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't waste my money then. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could send an email to every medical school and say, hey, this student, not an issue, Dr. Gray said. <laughs> can you call them? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the school. I have lots of connections, we'll see. All right. I, um, I think that's, that's all I've got. Okay. All well, great. Thanks for coming on and sharing your story and asking your questions and hopefully helping a lot of other students out there as well. Good luck to you. Thank you.